Does everybody know who Mary Lazic is? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's ironic, but you see more and more conservative women being put out front on issues like women's health. Yeah. And there's a reason, I mean, there's a reason. Yeah. You know, but yeah. But I guess what I just don't seriously don't understand is how does this how does this attack on women's rights correlate with you know job creators and yeah. profit? Where does that fit? In? Yeah. That's, White men are at the top. Women are down. If, yes. If you if you listen uh, or read, I don't remember which book it is. Like I was, and I where he tells about how he got into this political realm. And it was because he had read the contract for America. And he couldn't figure out what free enterprise and lower taxes had to do with abortion rights. And he couldn't figure out what gun rights had to do with you know, privatizing education. He couldn't figure out how all these things, and that's how all this started. That's the book. That was in moral politics. Right. It was moral politics. I can't remember which one it was, but it, it's it's because everything is linked no. in this moral frame, and we're going to see right now how all this relates to. And you know, hold hold your breath here because this is <laughs> this is shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's about a minute. Um, that's thinking about terminating their pregnancy. For crying out loud, you want them to have full information. You want them to have an ultrasound. You want them to know what's going on in that womb and what they're doing and that they're not going to be able to change that for the rest of their life. They make that decision. It's over. It's over in a few minutes. And then later on, they can live with the fact that they terminated their pregnancy and it was the best thing for them. Or they killed their child and they made a horrific decision and they regret it and they wish they never would have done it. And for those that want that information and wish that they never would have done it, that's what Sonia's Law is about. And we had plenty of testimony and plenty of women coming forth. A few of them you probably saw in the Capitol boldly wearing their pin, I regret my abortion. Okay. <laughs> That's powerful stuff. Do you have do you have, do you have any doubt that she believes she's morally right? She does so and, and that's the same with everybody on this issue. But what's what's really critical here is and I, we're not going to do this as an exercise because this, this is complicated, which is why I put it in here. This is like advanced framing. Um, so here's where this falls in the conservative frame, in the conservative moral system. It's about male control and society in general, right? So it's the, the hierarchy, the moral hierarchy of society, men over women. It's, it's that simple. So women who engage in immoral behavior, in this case, sex, think about sex. They have to bear the consequences of their actions as a just punishment, physically painful. So what the conservative kind of messaging gurus did was they took the metaphor of a fertilized egg. Exactly. They took it literally and equated it to personhood. What does that do? When you take that metaphor literally, basically it means that preventing an abortion saves a life. So that's really deep you know, that is deep moral value, moral system. You have men above women controlling family life and society, right? You have women who engage in sexual behavior 
So, wait, how do we all get here? The men weren't there. Who? You're going to like the next slide. Right? But, yeah, that's what they did. Right? They were on they were undisciplined, so they sh should bear the consequences of their immorality, which is having that child. Right? And then this metaphor, fertilized egg equals a person, you know, extending that metaphor, projecting it onto real life, means that it is now saving a life to prevent an abortion. Right? Here are some mistakes that progressives make on this issue. Okay. Never repeat the cells or people metaphor. You're reinforcing that scientifically false statement. Never use the term baby or unborn child. Call it what it is. It's a blastocyst. It's an embryo. Right? That's what it is. Call it what it is. Stop using the term abortion. Think of it metaphorically. You abort a mission. Okay, metaphors are very powerful. This is really hard, right? Because you have the pro-choice community. Okay, when you do what's called metaphorical mapping of choice, it's Consumer frame. It's shopping. Right? What's metaphorically, what's morally more powerful? The shopping pro choice frame or pro life? Yeah. Also, stop using the term war on women. Right? War is in the conservative frame. You go to war with someone who is immoral. That they, that person deserves to lose. They deserve to be conquered. So in that metaphor, what are women? Yeah. And they are moral. They deserve to be con. You know, yeah. So, how do you speak the truth on this issue? And this is a critical issue. I mean, healthcare in general. You know, healthcare and climate change are probably the two most critical issues facing our planet. 100% of pregnancies are caused by men. <laughs> right? It's not just a woman's issue. This is all. This is everyone's issue. Preventing pregnancy is a matter of the freedom to live your life. And, have, and the freedom to have the family that makes sense to you. It's a pro-family issue. Right? What's more pro-family than having the freedom to plan the type of family you want? Why would anybody want to impinge on that freedom? Finally, one of the more, you know, I've said it several times tonight, right? Government has a moral mandate to protect and empower. Protecting human life is one of the moral mandates of government. Okay, protecting women's health is a moral mandate. So, well, two questions. Uh, back row first. Just real one. quick. Um, so, I mean, when you first think about the fact that most people who are anti-abortion, likely also anti-birth uh, control, which seems crazy because you would think they would be for that, but I guess it's because the, the father figure doesn't want the woman to have any choice or control over exactly. her life. Exactly, okay. yes. Okay, I understand that. That is exactly right. It makes no sense. Well, to them it makes to sense. To right now that you said Yeah, that. yeah. On your pro-family, um, the pro-family that you want is what God wants. God is over us. So that's a conservative friend, yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. So they may not, but we have to say 
<laughs> no, you. No, again, right? So you're. When somebody says that, then it's God's choice. It wasn't my choice. It was God's choice. God blessed me with, you know, whatever. With all due respect to anybody who believes that. That's that's one moral side. You have to present the other moral side. But I'm just thinking they're they're perspective. Some people will say that. right, but you will get other people who will hear that. Shouldn't you have the freedom to plan your own family? They're going to go, oh yeah, I guess I should. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe we're not ready for a child yet. Maybe, you know, my job's not so secure, and you know, or I just lost my job, and right. But yeah. uh, when they're always threatening it, they would take that God's way and say it is God, or or you are God. God wants you to have child. Even though it may starve to death after it's born and it will never have an education. But that would be because it's your fault. You had that child. But God wanted you to have that child and you did what God wanted you, but you know That's exactly what yes, and you let them say that. Just like you let them talk about job creation, you let them talk about privatizing education. And then you come back with something Excuse me. Along the lines of, you know, look, 100% of pregnancies are caused by men, and men have to take responsibility for that. And together, men and women should have the freedom to plan the family that they want, when they want. And women should have the freedom to make their own health decisions. I love the word privacy. You want privacy? It's okay. I mean, privacy isn't really. It's, it is, but it's, it's not a it's not a real powerful core value. Okay, the last point uh, there doesn't that kind of feed into the yeah, that's what I was thinking. That right, so that that's one of those contested terms, just like freedom is a contested term, which we need to define. We need to take back what human is. Well, but there's going to be people that agree with you. There are going to be people that understand that it's a fetus or is a blastocyst and that a woman is a human being. And again, present both sides. Let people make a moral decision. You know, right now, we're not forcing people to make moral decisions. The conservative moral frame is out there and we're saying, look, here are the facts. Reason to, reason to your own conclusions based on the facts. People are going, I don't care, because Scott Walker's all about creating jobs. So. Let's get to Scott Walker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything, anything else? On, I mean, that, that was a really heavy, uh, oh boy, okay. Uh, I just had a really quick comment on um, the, the abortion issue and that. It's, I think it's a lot more complicated, and I think that what you put out there has, has good ideas. But um, on Sunday, I had the opportunity as part of the Allegheny County Democrat to have a table at Juneteenth at Sea Park. And um, a gentleman came up to us, he was looking at me, and I just wanted to introduce myself. And he goes, it is an African American, and he goes, I'm a Republican. And I paused and I said, Can I ask you a stupid question? I said, Why are you a Republican? They hate you. <laughs> they don't want you to vote. And so we kind of went back and forth a while, but he goes, but the Democrats believe in genocide. You're trying to wipe out our, our community. So no matter what I said after that, but but this is all, I mean, so it, it, it's, it's, gee, it's a really tough. It is, and, and you're, again, this is 40 years yes. dominance in the making, and you're not going to get everybody. No. And if you don't, move on. Because yeah. look, there are also people that have no capacity for empathy. They're called sociopaths. 